Recently, there was a very significant breakthrough which was made on a prevention of HIV. In my 40 years of doing AIDS research, I have never seen a result like this. Absolutely amazing to see a drug like this that provides 100% protection. And uh, it's a study which was supported by Gilead Sciences and it was done in South Africa and also in Uganda. And uh, very promising results. That's why we are going to talk about it today. And I have several things. But before you get to the actual study, because that's where you're going to see the effect and how they conducted the study and what the results were and uh, what uh, they were actually looking into, let's first of all get to know several things. Yeah, We have something that we call a vaccine. A vaccine will be something that will be injected into your body to prompt your immune system to produce antibodies that will fight that in the future should you come across it. We have treatment is anything that you're given out, either injected or you swallow or maybe you apply to give a relief from a certain pathogen. Like for example, when it comes to HIV, we have several treatments like ARVs. We have um, antibiotics in case of opportunistic infections. And all that those are treatments. A cure will be something that will totally take out the pathogen out of your body. Uh, we've looked at several cures for HIV, prospective cures, like for example, the transplant of bone marrow and replacement of the bone marrow with um, a population of uh, stem cells that will give rise to white blood cells that don't have a core receptor which is usually used by HIV to get into your body so it will come to a point where you have so many of those cells so a point where HIV will not be able to penetrate into your body and it will die off we also have CRISPR and this one is very interesting one because it's gene editing you know HIV will get into your body and it will be able to integrate with your DNA and that's how it's able to create messenger RNA to go to the ribosome and create whatever protein they, ne they need for their survival that's why we call it a parasite because it will take over the mechanism of the cell to make its own copies and also copies of um, the proteins that they need to survive and make uh, more and more of their own. Now, I think at that point you are okay. And uh, several other things that you need to know. Uh, like I said, a cure would just take something out of your body completely. We have several ways HIV is treated or we have several levels of uh, we have prevention and we have treatment. Prevention, one is using PrEP. It's, uh, it's now I think 10 years old. It's a very, very significant breakthrough also. This is whereby you have a drug that you're going to take before getting uh, an exposure to HIV pathogen. For example, you're working in an area or maybe in a situation that will later alone uh, predispose you to getting that infection. So you take PrEP. That is a way you take them, those drugs. And you take them uh, daily. There is a, I think we should make a video which is dedicated to PrEP and then PEP and then uh, ARV so that you get to know the differences and how they work. But um, when you go to get them, maybe my work will be to tell you the situation that may warrant you to get that so that because when you go to the hospital you'll definitely get the all the information that you need and how to take those drugs but for the prep it will prevent the entry of the virus before getting exposed now we have the second category still on prevention we have peps post exposure prophylaxis prep is a pre exposure prophylaxis now for pep this is when you've already been exposed, like for example, to a rape case, or maybe someone you didn't know that had that, or maybe someone that later on, before 72 hours are over, told you that they have HIV, or maybe you confirmed that they have HIV, or maybe you are unsure. So to be on a safer side, what they do is they prevent the entry of that virus into the body. So we have several in this uh, category when it comes to PEPs. You usually take it for, uh, for 30 days. So it will depend with uh, the drug that you have. We have those that you're going to take only one tablet per day for the whole of that time. We also have others that you're going to take two tablets per day and they are, they are 60. It's a container. I'll try to see if I can attach it here. In that container, you are either going to have 30 tablets, which is one per day, or you're going to have 60, meaning that you're going to have two for each day. So it will depend with what you get. They are all prepped. So what they do is they make sure that uh, HIV doesn't get into your system. So you're not supposed to exit 72 hours. Now let's go to ARVs. This is when you've been uh, confirmed that you have HIV already. So now the goal of this is to make sure that you have, and there are, very, there, there are several categories in this. The, the main goal is to make sure you have um, 
there is no much of the viruses in your system. Viral load, there's something called viral load. This is how many HIV virus particles you have per a certain volume of blood. So to make it the lowest possible limit, you would take ARVs. And also at a, a certain frequency, uh, it can be six months, it can be annually, you go to your center for usually where you are registered. And blood is collected and then tested to see whether uh, the drug that you're having or you are taking is effective because we have several levels, yeah, depending on uh, the resistance, uh, the effectiveness, or maybe if uh, you have other issues in the body, like for example, your liver, yeah, several things that uh, need to be put into consideration for you to be put in a certain regime. That's ARVs. We have NRTs, NNRTs, we have uh, protease inhibitors, there are so many. And uh, they all target a certain region during the cycle of HIV infection. Now let's go to the interesting part, yeah, the study. It was done in South Africa and also in Uganda. A total of 5,300 women and they were divided into three groups. You're going to see them. And uh, the women were cisgender, meaning that they were women at birth, that is female at birth. And uh, they are still women up to this point. So yeah, we have that. So women are more prone to getting HIV for the reasons that by now we know. One of which is having a larger mucosa, being on the receiving end, so many things, yeah? By now you understand that they are most uh, affected by the new incidences of HIV, so they are more prone to getting new infections. A sort of the 5,300 women, like I said, they were divided into three groups. The first group, and they were randomly selected, so there was no... Uh, a certain criteria so they were just randomly selected in a certain ratio and they everything was uh, blindfolded if i may say meaning that everyone even the researcher didn't know who is going to get which drug and even uh, the participants never knew which drug that they were going to take and in these three groups three of them uh, each group was taking a different uh, drug and we are interested in one of the drugs because this is what was very promising and this is what's actually the objective of the study the first group which said 2,134 women was given Lina Kapavin. And this is a very interesting one. This is what actually we are going to follow. It's actually the objective of the study. And also the second one was given Discovery. And this one is actually very promising. And uh, this is actually what is being used out there, even up to now. It's what is uh, given to prevent uh, getting it a visa prep. And uh, there were 2,136. And also a third group, which was uh, Truvada. Truvada is still another uh, drug, which is a PrEP. And uh, uh, there were 1,068 individuals, so they were there. Randomly selected. Uh, so if you look at the ratio, it's kind of two, uh, 2 and 1. That is Lina Kapavi. We have Discovery and Truvada. So 2, 2, 1. Now... There was no, you know, in every study, we need to have a control group that is given a placebo to limit them, something that we call bias. So this one, we didn't have, um, there was no need for that one, for having a placebo group, because one, it's not ethical. Second, we have already existing and uh, known preps that are working, so... There is no need for having a control group uh, which is being given placebo. Now, by being blinded or double blinded, it means that the, the researcher didn't know who was getting what. And also even the participants didn't know what they are taking. And uh, yeah, now, for Lena Kapavim, before we even go to the results, what's happening here is you get an injection, one, that will give you all, that will protect you throughout uh, six months. So meaning in a year, you get only two injections and the whole year you are covered. It's very impressive bearing in mind that right now, if you want to take preps, you'll have to take them on daily basis for the prevention to be effective. But uh, for Lina Kapavil, you just get uh, an injection and this injection will give you protection for six months. So those two injections will give you a whole year worth protection. You know, when uh, you take those daily pills, each and every day several things can come into play like you might forget yeah or maybe it might be you took something and maybe you vomited so so many things can happen and you even are not sure whether the food that you're eating is affecting whatever you are swallowing in drugs so so many things yeah but when you get an injection that gives you the protection throughout the year it's more promising now let's go to the results which is even more interesting because uh, like i said we had three groups and the first one was lina capavilla and this is very interesting this is where none 
of uh, 2134 women got HIV at all. No one got after administration of the same. Now, let's go to the second one, this COVID, and this one, out of uh, 2136, that is 2136 women, 39 got HIV, meaning that this is around 2.02% uh, the contracted HIV. It's actually a very small number, but uh, still significant. If you go to Truvada, 16 out of uh, 1068 women who are in that group uh, actually got HIV. That is 1.69%. Now let's go to the drug Lenacapavir, which is um, a very promising one, none. So meaning that the efficacy of this drug is 100%. It's actually very promising because in that group, none actually got HIV. And it's good to note that uh, they also pointed out in their site that um, there were no known consequences or side effects of taking the drug. So the safety of the drug is still um, uh, very recommendable. And uh, they still, they are going to continue the study until they, uh, they are covered, everything is covered, and they are going to come with a final report. And also uh, proceed to now, uh, this one, they're calling it purpose one. They're going to go to purpose two, which will now include people from uh, even others, maybe gays or those who have um, sex with men. Yeah, you understand. So other special groups will be included in that study so that they, they are going to get a bigger picture. Because sometimes things can influence how the drug will work in the body. Now, a huge disclaimer here. The fact that uh, it might be a very uh, good drug that is going to come and it will be the drug of choice, it doesn't protect you against other STIs. Other STIs are out there and some of them are even more aggressive than HIV. HIV is a little bit better. I'm not saying it's a, it's a good disease to have. It's a little bit better because we have so many drugs for it. Uh, we have ARVs that can give you mileage when it comes to uh, your life. But we have other uh, diseases out there that yeah, look scaresome. Like for example, look at uh, the gonorrhea which is um, around that is resistant to so many drugs meaning that once you get that one chances of getting a cure for it and you know bacteria can be very aggressive so getting a cure for that is actually very hard so yeah we have that we also have other like for example um we have hepatitis that will come and go to your liver and destroy your liver so many stis out there so it's not a we are not out of the woods yet. And also, what do you think about the whole drug? Yeah, Once it comes, or what do you think about the whole thing? Because for me, it's something that's uh, very interesting. But then I'm interested in one thing, the cure. It's, uh, the cure is long overdue. We need to even work harder to get the actual cure for this. And then now start focusing more of the efforts into now getting a cure for cancer. Because cancer is something else which is... Uh, really troublesome. I actually have a question for you. Maybe we can continue the conversation down in the comment region. Now that we have people who usually fear promiscuous activities due to now the acquiring of HIV, what do you think? Will uh, the STIs go up or down? Because me, I can actually predict and um, we might have an increase in other STIs because most of the people who are afraid of HIV will not be afraid anymore so they'll be out there outgoing let's have this conversation down in the comment region and again 75 percent of you are not subscribed to the platform and i would want you to do that and also like the video if you are gaining value here and also share to those people who might be interested see you in the next video i would want you to see a video i made about the, a possible cure for hiv i'll try to attach it here so see you in the next video